Hey y'all, my name is Charlotte and welcome to Let's Talk About It, a podcast of topics that range from health and wellness, former elite athlete life, and the ongoing journey of parenthood and self-improvement. This week's episode is a very heavy and ongoing emotion and that is grief and losing a parent. I think starting this episode with a little bit of a brief history of the relationship I had with my mom, kind of my family dynamic, and then how her sickness kind of evolved during my life. You know, growing up, I was an only child. I was adopted. My mom was born with a congenital heart defect, and she wasn't supposed to live past being a baby. She wasn't even supposed to make it past a year, and she lived to be almost 60 years old. So just taking that in and knowing that she overcame so many things and obstacles and health issues already just like speaks so many volumes of the type of woman she was. And so she was sick from when she was born and she had a heart condition. And I don't need to go into too many details, but that's kind of just gives you a brief overview of kind of the sickness that my mom dealt with and then with her health condition she couldn't have children on her own so she adopted and I'm so grateful because here I am so the relationship I had with my mom and my parents in general I felt was I had a really great happy childhood I mean, all things considered, she was very open about her health limitations and how she was doing, but she always looked at the positives and lived life to the fullest. I'm probably going to say that a hundred times because if you knew Sherry, that was exactly who and what she did. And she was very honest about my adoption and very open. So I always felt really comfortable knowing that I was and sharing that I was adopted. And I think that's really important. And she always like gave me a space to feel supported and to express myself and to feel comfortable but she wasn't trying to be my best friend but she was such a great parent and role model and don't get me wrong like i feel so bad now looking back i was a terrible teenager i was so sassy i had so much passion and feisty and i'm too cool and oh my gosh, don't embarrass me, mom, you know, as we do. Um, But that's just normal. And But I look now as a parent and I'm like, oh man, you could have been a little more, (laughs) little more, give her a little more grace, Char, come on. But that is kind of the relationship. She was so supported, loved me dearly and fiercely. And not to say again that we didn't have our fights and bicker and, you know, our moments, but I really do feel like, the relationship I had with my mom was solid. I feel like she was always sick my entire life. And so it just kind of, you know, these things just become normal when it's not normal, but it just becomes your normal. So she, um, you know, I can't really remember when I was younger, like major health issues, but she would go through waves of like being really healthy. Um, You know, she always had to wear oxygen at night. Um, She had a certain heart condition that like turned you know like blood wasn't getting enough blood wasn't getting to her heart so she had like a bit of like a blue coloring to her and um you know there but there those were just normal to me she had to be in a wheelchair if we're going super far um you know there's a million details I can go into but just to kind of give you that overview is kind of like where we're at and then I'm terrible with like dates and times she would go in waves of being really sick and then we would be like okay we need to prepare ourselves like i remember i think it was like around 12 like my mom got really sick and my dad was like we need to go to family therapy we all need to go together and be prepared for this and i cried the whole time and you know at 12 that's heavy that's hard and um for everyone the whole family you know there was a lot of sicknesses a lot of in and out of the hospital back and forth of being okay being really sick and so that roller coaster just became our normal and I just really look to my dad and think what an incredible partner to like stick by her side so strong and be with her throughout every step of the way and he went above and beyond um, in every possible way 
And then when I was in my mid-teens, I remember she had her first stroke. It was on July 4th at our lake house, and it was absolutely terrifying. And from that, thankfully, she was able to regain speaking and movement, and she was able to recover pretty well from that. And then she had a second stroke, and that one gave her paralysis on her left side, the ability to communicate was really really difficult she had she was able to like mentally be there and know what she wanted to say but could not express the words clearly so that became very very difficult and if you have a family member or know someone that's had a stroke and you've experienced this it's really hard to see because your person is there but they're not fully there They want to express themselves, but it's so challenging. And so it literally was like coming back to toddlerhood and trying to figure out what they're trying to say. And we used iPads and pointed to things and she used pictures and, you know, all these details are just what they are details. But the root of what I want to get across in this episode is when I was 18 years old and having to help take care of my mom and bathe her and clothe her. And that's just not a normal age for someone to be doing those things. Oh, man, you guys. I had to take a moment. Um, You know, being a caretaker of your parent just is a totally different ballgame, you guys. And um, if you know, you know. That was really challenging. And that was at the time, I think I stated in like a previous episode, You know, I took time away from skating and I helped my dad take care of my mom. It was a really, really hard time. And but yet also she was still so, again, like fighting to live and 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 support me and to see me. She got to see me graduate high school and she got to see me graduate college like she was there. And those milestones might not seem like much, but having her there was looking back now is the best gift ever she was so proud and so excited to be present for those milestones and i'm so forever grateful we're gonna have to take a lot of breaks and a lot of breath work you know these milestones might not seem like a big deal for most but for her to be there i know she was just over the moon and so proud and it's so amazing to have like support and love like that. Um, so we celebrated. Every occasion was a celebration. Every birthday, every anniversary. And I think that's what perhaps having some type of illness, like why does it take an illness or health issues to make you just appreciate the little things in life, you know? Like like I said, every every day was a celebration and she truly did live life to the fullest and we went all out for her 50th for their anniversaries and i'm so glad we did because i remember them so fondly they were such a celebration and you just never know when your last when it will be the end so you might as well celebrate everything along the way i think in this episode i'm going all over But the main thing I think that is really tough is becoming the caretaker of your parent and having to do that at such a young age when it's just not the norm, right? It's like our parents are supposed to live to be 80, 90, and like we're in our 40s, 50s. And, you know, I wanted just a little bit more time. And I think, you know, it's really hitting me now being in motherhood now and all those milestones. Again, I'm so glad she made the ones she did but it's like man I didn't get to introduce her to like now my husband I really would have loved that and then me getting married was a huge milestone and I wanted her to be there and and I know I know I know I know she's with me every day because she's just a part of me but these milestones my my wedding and then having our first child that was a lot harder than I thought it would be I mean I knew it would be hard and But so many emotions came up, y'all, so many. And sometimes you just got to like feel and cry and be upset by it. And and just I'm sad and mad that she can't be here to experience and be a grandma. 
and share any words of wisdom or just complain about how hard parenting is. <laughs> I mean, if you've lost a parent or a loved one, you know all of these life's milestones that they aren't here for. Each one is still beautiful and, and, and so exciting and so whether it's good or bad or just change, but it's like they're not here. So every milestone is just like a little bit sad because you're like, wait, my people aren't, not everyone's here. And, you know, it just makes you think, how would they react? What would they feel? How, it's, it's such a tricky space. And I know you can't live in the what ifs. And I know we have to, we never ever move on but we have to like continue living life that's what she wants that's what she did but man is it hard for us here that are left right like I know she's no longer sick I know I, I all those things are great but sometimes you want to be like God, just I just wish you were here you know um, and it's selfish but it's how I feel <laughs> so yeah this transition with motherhood especially now that my son's two and a half and like discipline's coming into play and his personality's coming out and it's like you just need that like motherly female role and energy and that's just really missing in my life and I think that's that's been really really tough and you know I'm strong I've got my mom's energy and passion in me but you know sometimes you just want to pick up the phone and just call and vent or express or just share and I still talk with my dad but if you're a woman y'all know men are just wired differently <laughs> it's just a different it's just totally different so what I'm learning with grief is that it comes in waves it hits you when you aren't prepared it is ongoing and I mean as it should be the the person that you love so dearly is no longer here earth side and it's and you just mourn the life and times that you used to have and it just goes to show that you truly do have to live every moment and be present and tell your friends and family that you love them and I was able to do that with my mom she did that to me and if you are dealing with grief I, I, I truly feel like talking it out talking about their memories sharing the type of person they were with your spouse or your friends or family is also really comforting and if you have a great support system, which I feel very lucky, they'll listen and like my husband's like, tell me about her. And it's so nice to have that because it does bring bring some type of comfort. I think also what I deal with is it's really tricky when, well, now it's been, it'll be nine years this October. But in the beginning, it was like your camera roll or your pictures are just filled with, you know, recent photos. And then as the years go on, you, they're not there and they're filled with new memories and new photos and new people. And that's real, that's really hard. And the memories start to kind of go and I don't want that. I, I have to remember and I feel really lucky my dad and our family would take some videos of our parties and stuff. So I, I really need to dive into those and look at some home videos and just hear her voice and hear her speaking and she was feisty if you knew her she spoke her mind she had a sailor's mouth she taught me all I know and um, yeah I think overall I'm also in my second pregnancy I'm very hormonal and there are days when you know I just break down and cry and that's okay um, and then I just have to remember to celebrate her, to celebrate her memory, to keep it going, to share stories with Austin, to be an example of the example she gave for me, for my son. And I think that is something that is really powerful. And I mean, we're all, unfortunately, or however you want to look at it, I know it's morbid, but we're all, our time will come. But I think it's just really challenging when you're like, wait, you're not supposed to lose your mom when you're 23. Like, that's not... That's not the way it goes, right? There's certain timelines that you just are quote unquote normal and it's hard when those get shifted. I also just want to share that if you are in grief, if you've lost a parent, I really did find it helpful to go to therapy and talk about it. Um, I know some people, maybe that's not a method they find helpful, but um, you know, I'm also in the market. If anyone listening to this has a book or has 
any words of wisdom on how to deal with specifically to losing your mom, being a woman, and then entering in these milestones of being a parent and having kids. I always say we're just doing the best we can. And I also have to remember what my mom would say, yes, to live life to the fullest. And that she did. And I will continue to do and share with my son and share with y'all. And I know this episode was all over the place and we got emotional, but I'm just going to continue to share and hope to help or inspire someone with my story and experiences because that's the whole point of life, right? I love when people connect and share and it brings more conversations and being like, oh yes, wait, me too. I feel that exact thing or same or that's exactly what I was thinking or any of those things. Just know that you're not alone. And I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this episode and I'll catch you in the next one.